Hey everybody, um, thanks for having me. Um, my mission today is to walk you to, through a bit of code um, to implement um, a renderer in JavaScript. And as just said, it's kind of the best thing that the browser already does. So why would we be doing this? Let's say for now we just, we just want to. So um, a bit more detail. Um, what do we want to do today? Um, so we want to misuse a few new browser features that came up with HTML5 and stuff. I uh, want to use a bit of JavaScript to manipulate SVG, HTML, CSS, DOM, and the CSS uh, object model um, in, no, in any order. So I hope you guys have some fun on the way. Uh, I seriously had uh, a lot of fun doing this. So um, a bit more detail. Um, so what we want to do is we want to trigger the HTML rendering capabilities of the browser from JavaScript. So that basically what the browser is doing at its best is it just takes HTML and shows it to us in a nice way. What I want to do is get a screenshot from a random web page. Um, well, it's not so random, but um, and actually render HTML in the canvas. Or in other words, basically implementing a polyfill, which is kind of um, filling a gap that has not been uh, defined by a standards body. Uh, it's not there, but I still think this gap is, needs filling. And this is how it looks like. It's basically just canvas, get context, uh, draw HTML. Uh, that's what I want to do. Um, it looks pretty easy, does it? Um, so let's see. Um, so there's a very quick solution. Uh, Firefox uh, gratefully offers um, an API to that. Basically, all you do is get a canvas, um, get the context, and you draw a window to that canvas. Well, that's basically what I want to do, right? There's a but to that. It only works uh, as a plugin in Firefox. So if you are a plugin, you're allowed to make use of that. Um, from a web page, you do not, you do not, um, you do not go through that. Um, so you have, to, um, you have to be a plugin. Um, this, of course, is due to security concerns. So um, if, if the browser would allow you to render a random web page, you could um, just, go, just like paint the, um, the open Gmail tab of your user render it to the canvas, and then read back from it. And that would allow us to um, get content that we're not allowed to see. So of course, that is forbidden. Um, and yeah, that's not, that's not bringing us further. So let's see. So um, maybe SVG can help us here. Um, the, if, if you guys know Canvas, the canvas does allow me to draw an image. Um, well, SVG is an image, right? So let's see whether we can uh, move forward to that. So maybe, um, I don't know how, how public that knowledge is, but SVG does allow you to, to uh, embed foreign objects. Uh, SVG is uh, XML. Uh, it, does allow anything, it does allow other contexts that all, can also be XML. And for example, it could be HTML, um, or actually XHTML. So the, the example that you can see here, I hope the font is big enough. Um, it's basically just a, a strong element inside HTML, inside a foreign object in an SVG. And that is a valid image. Can we build on that? Let's see. Um, well, first of all, what is XHTML? So SVG as an XML standard um, can only embed foreign objects that are valid XML. Well, HTML5 goes to great length of allowing you to do whatever you want uh, and still make it look pretty. Um, that doesn't work well with SVG. So here's a bit of code that basically creates a document um, puts in some HTML, then overrides some XML namespacing, and then triggers the, um, the Firefox uh, XML serializer to serialize that back to, back to us, and that is then valid XML. This does not work in Chrome and Safari, because basically what they, uh, those guys are saying is um, the XML serializer uh, by, stand, by the standard um, only needs to serialize XML. So um, anyway, that's a shim um, I wrote for that, which is basically 150 lines of code. It's not that difficult. Um, but we need to fall back to a pure JavaScript implementation for that browser. So a second step needed. Um, if I want to um, show the SVG as an image, I need to inline this. So the, new, the future way of doing that, you guys possibly have seen, uh, have come, come across the blob uh, interface. So basically, you create a blob, uh, put that SVG inside, define the type, and you create an object URL from that. Um, that's the future. Um, last time I checked, Safari is not up to this. Um, so we kind of fall back to the existing way that works pretty well. Um, you guys certainly know data URI, so you just pipe the whole SVG into a data URI, uh, into an image, and you're done. So. 
Yeah, we can bring this together. Uh, and that's fairly simple. Uh, I talked a lot, but basically that's the solution. You create a new image, stuff the data URL into that image, and you draw this uh, to the canvas. Well, congratulations. Uh, basically, um, we're done. Um, we embedded HTML as an HTML uh, string um, into a foreign object into an SVG, which we then converted into a data URI to yield an image that we then drew uh, into the canvas using draw image. Well, that sounds all good now. Again, but um, so SVG is not allowed to uh, reference external resources, um, and now it's, it starts uh, being m much more fun. Um, so if you um, if you draw an SVG to the canvas, um, all your resources need need to be inlined or need to be present in that document. You're not allowed to to link to external stuff. Well, that's a problem because HTML does allow me to include images. Uh, buttons that have typed image, uh, style sheets, um, background images, um, add imports, um, font face, that's a lot. And that's, that's all referencing external uh, resources that SVG is not allowed to access. So next step, what could we do to solve that? And you see, it's, it's all like very logical uh, uh, steps to that. It's getting, it's getting worse by the minute, kind of, though. Um, I can easily... Uh, you include images or uh, buttons of, in, um, of, of type image. So, um, sorry, inputs of type image. Um, so basically, uh, all I need to do is uh, create, uh, get the HTML string, create a document from that. Uh, so, give a, get a DOM structure. Then I can basically just get myself all the images, iterate over those images, and just load and embed that image source. That's the theory. How does that look like? So, um, well, um, that's an image. That's an external uh, path, external image PNG. Uh, what I want to do is just replace that content of the image as a base64 string into that image. Um, how do I do this? Well, I can load that image via Ajax, right? So basically, all I do is I uh, create an uh, XHR request, sorry, XHR, um, and wait for the image to load. And when the content is there, I, um, I then um, serialize it to base64. Um, yeah, I think the guys just realized that my time clock is not set correctly. Um, so, well, basically loading, uh, loading the image via Ajax and just piping the serialized base64 encoded uh, content back to the image. That sounds a bit easier than it actually is. Um, Ajax does not allow, um, <coughs> sorry, Ajax does not allow you to um, load binary context. Um, Ajax was defined to load XML, which is text. So um, that is solved. There's a new interface. You guys possibly know about XML HTTP request 2. Um, this knows about binary blobs, but last time I checked, Safari again is not up, uh, up to that. So that's an easy workaround. It's one of the top rated uh, answers on, on Stack Overflow. What you just do is, when you get back the binary content, uh, it is kind of an, uh, an inawful state. What you just do is you iterate over each and every byte, and you end it with a um, byte mask um, to basically cut off everything but, um, out, outside the... the uh, the byte um, field. So um, that's a very ugly hack. It is very, very slow. Uh, if you load like a few uh, megabytes uh, big image, um, yeah, anyway. But that's, that's the solution, the best solution that works right now. So, um, so basically, um, I just showed you how to in inline uh, an image uh, using Ajax uh, and then uh, doing the binary conversion. And I can now feed that back into the HTML page using data URIs. Next step. Um, background images, right? You, you remember the list I, I showed a few minutes ago, basically um, all those different uh, kind of things. Background image was number two. How do we inline background images? Um, background images are images. Uh, the problem is they are hidden in CSS. Well, that's pretty simple. Now I just need a CSS parser to go through all my CSS, find all the background images, inline uh, those resources just as I did before. Well, that's pretty simple. So, hey, uh, we just write our own CSS parser for that, uh, which then again is fairly simple. Um, so the browser is a CS, has a big CSS parser, right? I mean, basically, uh, what we're talking about here is everything what the browser already does. You just need to, to kind of find a way to trigger that. So here's the parse CSS method. It basically, what it does is it creates a style element, um, puts the CSS that you want to parse into that style element, and now here's a, a small, ugly hack. Um, you need to create a document you're not interested in that document, but you need to apply that style element that you created into some kind of uh, uh, DOM structure. Otherwise, the browser does not execute the parsing algorithm. So what you do, create the style element, put the text inside the style element, put the style element into the document, 
And then finally, you can um, access the past CSS rules. So that's the shortest CSS implementation there is. It's um, the answer you get from Stack Overflow. I think I answered that. Um, and um, that's how you do CSS parsing in the browser. Now, um, we can put this together again. Um, we parse CSS with the background images. We find, um, we iterate over all the rules. If the property value background image is set, we inline that background images and install that back into the CSS. We've done that with, an, uh, with the image before, so this is just basically the same thing with the added complexity of parsing CSS. Next, next on the list. Um, there are link uh, elements out there uh, with, uh, for style sheets. So what we need to do is now inline those elements. We're not allowed to put that into an SVG. Um, uh, uh, the link elements are not referenced in that SVG, so we need to inline this. Well, <coughs> sorry. What, uh, what do we need to do is um, we need to load the content uh, again via Ajax. That's fine. Um, then we uh, just put the content into a style uh, element. And then we're basically done. Well, not really. So um, if you guys know CSS, um, I know it's JSConf, but um, so there is um, the thing that resources linked in CSS are relative to the style sheet. So if I take style sheet content, take it out of the style sheet, and put it into the HTML document, the URLs are all, all wrong. So what I need to do before pasting it into a style element, I need to go through all the URLs, um, which is background uh, images, which is uh, font phase rules, and add style imports. I need to fix up all those URLs. Well, that's simple again. I just need to take care of that. So here's the example. Um, if I have a, a sprite PNG that sits below uh, the parent folder and then images, um, and this is referenced in assets style default CSS, I need to kind of adapt that path, because um, now um, assets is basically the offset to that. So I just use the URL parser from, uh, from the Node.js implementation, which is pure JavaScript, which is, which is uh, very easy to include then. Uh, thanks to Browserify. So it would be nice uh, for the browser to allow you to do a URL parsing, but sadly you have to fall back to a pure JavaScript implementation again. Well, there you go. Basically, we rendered HTML through an SVG's foreign object. We inlined all the external resources um, by first loading content through AJAX in case of binary content did an extra hack. We uh, embedded images and fonts through data URIs. Um, uh, for style sheets, we just pasted the whole uh, uh, text. We parsed CSS for finding resources that we needed to adapt again. It's kind of a recursive search. Uh, and we adapted relative path. So basically, that's the whole algorithm behind um, getting, don't forget what the initial target was, uh, for getting HTML inside an SVG rendered to the canvas. So. Yeah, let's talking more demo time. What you're saying, seeing here, and I don't, you might not believe me, so I'm going to, to show you. Um, um, this is the um, title page of my talk, rendered um, into a canvas. Well, um, it's a bit hard to believe, right? It could, it could have just been a screenshot uh, I've taken. So let's switch over to, I can just, yep. So just say, uh, hey there. And reload that. And even better, to show you that this is actually a canvas, I can start shooting my HTML and do something awesome with that. <laughs> so yeah, maybe that answered at least one question. Why, 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 why would you do that? Um, that, interestingly, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you want to have that on your website, but it's a, it's a funny, funny thing to do. OK, it, before you like all storm out and say, I want to do that on my next project or something, which you possibly don't, but anyway, um, there are a few issues that you need to know about. Um, so first of all, um, as I said before, um, the browser does not allow you to do certain kinds of things uh, for a good reason. And here, we, this hack, basically, does not uh, open up a total new attack vector. All the resources that we're inline, everything that we're doing, is all in the confines of the existing solution. But that means all the content that we in inline through AJAX is bound to the same origin policy. So if you want to, let's say, just take a screenshot of google.com, uh, well, I can't do that from my web page here, because I can't access google.com through AJAX. 
unless, of course, the server that you want to uh, request uh, with, um, they offer calls headers or something. So this is not a solution to take screenshot of any pages. No, you're not allowed to do that. Otherwise, you could be reading out somebody else's Gmail account. Um, then there is a, I consider that a bug. Um, I've talked to f a few Chrome guys, uh, Chrome developers. Um, Rereading from the canvas so far is not allowed in Safari and Chrome. So um, Firefox shines. Um, and um, the problem here is basically that Safari and Chrome have a and now I'm kind of guessing. I, I believe they have a kind of simplistic approach to their sandbox uh, because they, they didn't, didn't see somebody coming along and wanted to do that kind of thing. They just said, whatever there is, if there is a foreign object inside an SVG, we're just going to taint the canvas. And if you want to read back from the canvas, we're going to throw a security exception. So in that case, if you want to do something like that and you want to read back from the canvas, um, then, no, sorry, you're getting a security exception. If you want to do that, Firefox so far is the only solution. Um, next issue is um, the IE guys, uh, <coughs> sorry, the IE, IE guys uh, are now starting to implement foreign object. IE so far doesn't support it. Uh, luckily, it's, it changed from uh, in consideration to in development, so hey, uh, I'm waiting for the next uh, IE version to come out, and hopefully uh, we can do the same uh, thing there. Um, one more thing, um, form inputs don't render. Um, the, the, the best, uh, the best um, explanation that I have is, well, form inputs um, are kind of, uh, kind of fall back to what your um, host system gives you, right? So <clears throat> possibly the SV SVG rendering capability does not have access to that, so form inputs kind of look funny. Uh, last thing, performance. Uh, I did cons so it, it does take a lot of time doing all that AJAX uh, uh, polling, then getting um, the CSS, parsing the CSS, inlining everything. It can take up to a few seconds. Um, I, I did consider using a web worker for that, but sadly, uh, I do make a use of a lot of um, DOM APIs. I don't need the actual page this is going to, but I need something. You saw the example for the CSS parser. Uh, this used uh, a newly created document, so I do need access to that, and sadly that is not uh, doable in web workers. Um, here's an incomplete list of workarounds that uh, was needed to, to get all that stuff going. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go through that full list, this is a bit of a reference and kind of to show you um, that whatever code you guys are writing during your day job is not going to be as worse as what you're seeing here. Um, so I think, uh, I hope people, I hope companies in the future will still employ me um, without, you know, knowing that I'm one of the worst hackers in the world. Um, there are a few outstanding browser issues here. Um, so some of that things uh, you need to work around if you want to do stuff like that. And some of them just basically keep me from going further. Um, and this, interestingly, bug number one is Robert O'Callaghan from uh, Mozilla who just got me onto that idea. So he's, I think, from New Zealand, and he started talking about rendering HTML to the canvas in 2006. Um, so he kind of inspired me to go down that road and do the, all that things. Um, well, what, the, what is this all about? It's not, not just fun. I didn't just sit down for uh, more than a year to, to get that kind of uh, solved. Um, <clears throat> so this first went into a project on GitHub. Um, like a few different ones, because um, basically I needed to implement a full resource uh, uh, inlining process. There are a lot of node solutions to that, but sadly none works in the browser, because nobody, is, I think, is stupid enough to do that in the browser. And um, 24 8 people on GitHub thinks it's a neat idea. I just don't know why. I don't know what they are using it for. I've talked to a few people at this conference, and few pe uh, some people actually seem to be using HTML to Canvas, which is a similar solution for finding out issues with their web page. So if a user complains that something's wrong, they like to take a screenshot of that page, phone back home, and then they know for debugging purposes what went wrong. My personal use case, and a few of you have uh, seen me talking on Tuesday at CSSConf, uh, I want to prove that um, you can test CSS and the UI taking screenshots. And that is why I basically uh, went down that path. So thanks, guys, for listening. And maybe you do something great with that and tell me about it. Thanks.